Can you auto tune me? So we decided to take a little sleeping break because it was late last night, and uh, we're picking back up where we left off from yesterday. We got a couple new brothers along with us, Everett and Gary Lee. You can go check out okay. Gary Lee at his YouTube channel, Gary Lee Haskins. I'll put the link in the description. I'll try to put a bunch of links in the description and a bunch of uh, paragraphs and all that good stuff for cross-correlating information. So... Does, do we have anybody I want to start reading, or should I start reading? Hit it, bro. <clears throat> All right. 24. Thus, the ideographic and pictographic transmissions through multiple tracings of light convert into a series of color cybernetical sets of phonetic... Uh, into a series of color cybernetical sets and phonetic sets of color. Multiple tracings of color create a cordial color control for input, which is then coordinated with the process of, sensi of sensitized attunement. The light geometry changes the brain's perceptual apparatus as well as the feeling centers of the body. All right. So we read this part yesterday, and I'm starting to realize I'm going to give a little abstract for Carrie before we jump into this. Um, this chapter has to do with the language of light. It's mm -hmm. saying that, um, to put it in layman's terms, you have like an internal color screen. We call this the mind. You know, you can uh, modulate your visual, the internal visuals at will, you know. Um, the quickest way to relay information is through ideographs or um, thought forms or I guess you could say, you know, scenario abstracts. Through literally trans transmitting thoughts of three-dimensional conceptual realities. Like, if I were to tell you to think of a very hectic or think of a big event that you had gone to in your past where a lot was going on, you know, and there's a lot of people moving around, like a sports event or a concert, you know, if I explained, if I asked you to explain to me what happened in that event using your words in a linear fashion, it would take a very long time, right? You'd have to be like, well, uh, I saw a car pulling up outside the window, and right when I saw the car pull up to the front, you know, the music and the drummer started playing in the behind me, and it all synced up perfectly, and at the same time, I looked to the left and saw this pretty girl, and I've had this weird feeling, and it brought me back, you know, and you have yeah, to explain every single thing linearly. When, when you see it in your mind, you can see it all happen like that in an instant, you know? You don't have to speak anything. It's just mm -hmm. in your mind, on your quote-unquote color screen. So this chapter is saying that your color screen, like literally when you picture that scenario of like, you know, what the girl was wearing, what color was the car, what the sound was, those are all, all that information, all that data is relayed via your color screen, depth, perception, everything, right? Because you see it. Yeah. And he's saying the angels make use of that type of language to convey information because it's a lot more efficient. And, that makes sense. Yeah, and then he's saying that uh, this knowledge of language comes from a core memory of information being shared by the higher evolution. So pretty much there's a core memory bank of cosmic language Damn. that is actually a predecessor to our universe. So it actually Ooh. can, like, it, it's not, um, it's, it doesn't submit to gravity. It's already qualified through gravity, and it can, it can actually modulate gravity. So these higher thought forms can affect the material reality. And he's saying that this is a lost language that is that exists in our like internal DNA, in our mind-body-spirit complex. And we, if we unlock it, we can um, interface with the cosmic mind because this is the language of the cosmic circuits, and this is how the Brotherhood and the Angels speak. So he's teaching you how to unlock your, like I, like I just said, your, uh, your series of color cybernetical sets and phonetic sets of color. So he's phonetic. He's using the word phonetic to describe color, so like the different way to express color. 
phonetic is like voice, right? It's, it's almost sound. Exactly. Yes. So we unlock through sound, through our sound vibration. That's how we be interface with the light. Yeah. So if you go to the if you go to the passage above that at twenty three. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore, the brain must be trained to handle complex ideographs and pictographs through a unique light process, which coordinates all the chakra centers to the audio coupling of color and sound indexes. Makes sense, man. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about superimposing sound and color over your visual cortex internally. And then using mantras specifically as a way to um, to tap into... The, these audio and color complexes. Um, and I was saying yesterday that the reason in these ancient Eastern, you know, mind, body, spirit practices, they're using audible sounds um, in order to, in order to kind of unlock these levels of the minds and taps into these states of altered consciousness. Um, and I was even saying that, uh, from what I've read in, in the yoga practices that I'm trying to go through is that um, you do the audible mantras, you know, if you're doing the Om chant, but you should also try just purely mentally chanting it um, and oh. tapping, tapping into that same sensation, whatever sensation is created by audibly making the sound, try and tap into that same thing, but on the mental level by just doing the mental chant. Yeah. And, and you'll go back and forth until you can do it either which way yeah the keys have a big yeah. part that talks about the internal audio field it's very interesting and like tune ourselves the i mean get this if y'all want to know if this is true or not like every night you go to sleep and you are in these dreams where your color screen is being simulated by you and like a virtual exactly. reality that same thing is happening also, that's your, also your internal audio in a sense. You know, you can hear noises in a dream. Hearing is different in dreams. You don't perceive it the exact same way, but um, often I actually, I don't know, to, like I don't describe it as sounds in dreams, but I still get like information. I still have conversations. So there is a type of internal sound and light that is being simulated within the mind. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. For sure. Wow. And that's like our input. That's our like uh, our base input of how we perceive this reality. It starts really in the mind and the mind pictures and the pictographs and the sounds that we decide to say internally. And it's like it starts as this light language and then later comes out into the material world. So it kind of like starts on the inside through the light. We get this transmission in a way. And then the outside is reflected from the inside, right? It's kind of what we're getting at. Yeah, it goes both ways. You know, when, when you're thinking about things, often you picture, you might think of those things. Like when I'm talking, um, the first thing I perceive is the English language, but I've actually translated the thought before it was in English, before it was in any human language. Um, what I'm saying right now comes from thoughts that are beyond language experiences which are beyond language um but i it tra i'm so used to translating information like this it feels like it feels like i forget that that space but if you try meditation and you try mental silence you can start to tap into like these pictographs pre-language conversion and they'll arise within your internal mental screen and um, part of the part of meditation practice is like um, learning how to react to that arising of you know internal visions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and then we can we can put the right pictographs in our mind because a lot most of us are not really uh, in control of the movie of our mind. We get control from the outside world, mainly the media and social media, and those are literally putting the images in our brain. And changing up the vibrations. The How light crazy scenes. is that? Yeah, people aren't even conscious that it's happening to their vessel. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's that's awakening, man. When you can realize, like, oh shit, I'm in the fucking matrix, and uh, you, can, <laughs> you, can, you can start to write the code yourself. Essentially, you know, if you're yeah. Really that metaphor. Uh, but you have to become aware first. That's the first step. Is you have to say, wait, hold on a second. Who's putting these ideas in my head? Where is this coming from? Why do I feel like this? And right. Just do I have to? Then, do I have to? 
you know, entertain these ideas and thoughts. Exactly. No, we don't. And I don't even know if I'm not 100% aware. I've definitely made progress over the years, but I'm not 100% aware of all of the vibrations and pictograph from mm-hmm. the environment because I think in order to be at that level, it seems like you almost need to live like a hermit or at least have your mind very, very trained to be able to be resilient to the outside influences because it's so easy to get sucked in to the world and have it think for us essentially. But that's why we have practices, man. That's why we do what we do to improve our mind, body, spirit complex so we can create heaven on earth because that's what it's all about, right? <laughs> or at least heaven within. Let's so, go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was only one paragraph. <laughs> I know, dude. That's what I'm saying. It gets like that every single <laughs> passage, bro. Welcome uh, to the keys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so hard to get through these chapters. But it's so much easier with, like, a, a group of homies, you know? Mm-hmm. All right. Drew, Drew says, less talking, more reading. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are on 26, 26. Sir. This process of reception is begun by the projection of a brightly colored iota form of a light upon the face of the subject so as to trigger the necessary chemical combinations which activate the mind to receive the ideographs of communication. There's an interesting video of like has to do with those megalithic marvels of a structure in Peru that I'm gonna link in the description is pretty tight. Yo, that's up? what we just sorry to interrupt, but that's what we just said. Like it's it starts in the it starts in the internal, and then it's reflected chemically, it said. It's like it's reflected on the, on the physical. You know, it's reflected in the chemical combinations, which is, which is essentially it starts internally, then it works into the chemical into combinations. The chemical, which yes. Maybe, maybe <laughs> you can say is the glands, which are associated with the chakras. That's, man. Okay, this is good. I'm liking this. Yo, what's up, everyone? What up? Yo. We're recording yeah, this yeah. right now. We're, this is official. We're doing a little study group. Comparing oh. the Urantia book to the Key of Enoch. Nice. Yes, sir. Sure. Ah, listen in then. Cool. Um, 27. The projected language instruction is maintained both within the geometric center of the projected field and the receptive field simultaneously. Mm. Whoa. Awesome. That's, that's trip. Mm hmm. So the projected language instruction is maintained both within the geometric center of the projected field. So like the geometric center of the projected field would be like your third eye if you're projecting it from your forehead, right? And then actually in the field itself. Cool. When the mind is activated, the brain can receive new ideographic, i.e. living holographic forms and cybernetic geometries of light constituted by several sets of signals which are made fully comprehensible. These signals are sent through serial sequences of rapid flashes, yet the original waveform is not changed. It is seeded into the mind of man and is not affected by the retinal image. What the fuck? (laughs) Excuse my language, people, sorry. (laughs) Whoa. Hence, it retains its original pattern and color. Just as the lower galactic intelligence can communicate with the various planetary realms of intelligence through thought words heard within your mind, though not received through audible sound, so also the lords of light communicate through pictographs and ideographs fully experienced within your mind, yet not subject to any retinal image. Hmm. Ooh, that's yeah, wild. Yeah, literally, like, <laughs> like bypass the eyes, fool. <laughs> Telepathic yeah, I mean, imagery. Yeah, we all have we all have that idea of visions. That makes sense. Like I get that. So, I'm getting me wow. juicy. I dig it. Um, thirty-one. However, <clears throat> this is so complex that the letters of the living light must first be seated into the subconscious during sleep. Ooh, Ooh okay. so you got to train yourself. You have to meditate oh, before you God. sleep. You were just talking about this, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, lucid dreaming, baby. Preparatory. All right. We can either start a program where we meditate on all the Hebrew fire letters before we sleep. <laughs> yeah. Every day, bro. <laughs> Damn, you know, we so... talked about this last time. Like, a third of our life is sleeping. And I remember I said, like, yo, it's probably a lot more important than we think it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? For real. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's a trip. 
Okay, so let's keep that was the first sentence of that on 31 again. <laughs> this is to prepare the spiritual inner vehicles to unify all of the unassimilable geometries of the dark subconscious into a divine letter. Oh, wow. This divine letter can hold the attention of the soul while it is sleeping and carefully school the soul to recognize the differences between the divine letters and the archetypal patterns of the subconscious. Jeez. What? what? Sleep is Ooh. so important. Jeez, yeah. Jeez, I'm holding all my swears right so now because we're this, recording. <laughs> this is, and this is kind of a separate topic, but I'll mention real quick that, um, you know, when people talk about in- inducing out-of-body experiences uh, or entering shared dream scenes, uh, this is super important. You have to be able to know the difference between what is your subconscious, um, yep. you know, visuals versus what is actually an external reception being, you know, beamed into your mind. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, you if you feel like you're going out of body and traveling around, like, then how do you prove that you're actually in an external environment that you're not just simulating? You know, there's a difference between receiving reality and projecting reality. Um, and in your normal dreams that are your subconscious, you are like project, you are projecting your visual and audible reality of senses. But you have to you have to turn that inside out using your consciousness, your ability to be conscious of these two, you know, facts: um, your internal reality versus your external. And um, that's what this is talking about. You know, this I, this this fire letter concept is a three D language that we talked about earlier or last night. Um, and so you have to tap into this 3D language and then start to make the difference between receiving this 3D language and entering that environment, um, you know, versus the archetypal patterns of the subconscious. Damn. The rookie Shit. astral projector versus the vet. <laughs> <laughs> Before I go to sleep, I always try to meditate, man. Like five, ten minutes, I don't, you know, shut the screen off. Thank you for bringing that up. It. Me too, dude. It's like I'm, I yeah. literally try to imprint into myself. I'm doing it already subconsciously. Yeah. It's just a natural thing. I'm trying to imprint into my subconscious before I sleep. Before I fall asleep, I'm like, oh, all right, adjuster, do your thing. Like, like, yeah, I think it's important. Like you go in with a good foundation. Mm-hmm. Know that you're gonna, you're about to enter a six to eight hour journey of the mind. You gotta like prepare yourself a little bit. Right. Give your energy a push in the right direction. Exactly. That's a trip, and this explains it like in way more detail. I've read this book like six, seven times, and I haven't caught onto it that much yet. <laughs> see how much it's how good it is reading with people all right yeah <clears throat> 32 when the soul has been prepared to recognize several of the divine letters then education of the soul can begin in creative states of consciousness there the soul vehicle begins to experience the manifestations of light projections and geometries which appear as a singular manifestation of light before they are converted into picture grams and series of picture and series of picture grams through these geometries the soul recognizes it has a counterpart known as the overself which can communicate with it here we go that's what i'm talking about it sounds like a thought adjuster yes yes sir. that's why we started saying ooh there we go <laughs> or a guru whatever you want to call it yeah, higher self. You missed it mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. We did a Keys of Enoch study. We picked a random chapter, and it was a chapter where they mentioned the thought adjusters by name. <laughs> it's tight. Oh. Yeah, this is the only book that does that. It's pretty trippy. Um, <clears throat> and when the soul is sufficiently acclimated to the pictures of light, the over self as instructor shows the soul that has many spiritual vehicles working within a divine scripture which is the food for the spiritual vehicles. I knew it, dude. I fucking knew it. I fucking... Oh, I need to stop swearing. Sorry, guys. I, I knew it. I knew it. I don't know why. Subconsciously, I feel like I've almost been try- attempting to do this, you know, like imprinting your mind, like, all right, like, all right, thought adjuster, like... Yeah, man. Because the Year Answer book says, like, they do a lot of work in your subconscious, and the thought adjuster can't project, like, visions. It has to use your thoughts that you already have to show you it uses the own concepts that are already lying in your mind and it tries to adjust those that's why it's called a thought adjuster uh-huh and if you, the, oh, the more you, thought creator yes like exactly uh. so the more you learn the more the adjuster has to work with to teach you. oh dude that's crazy you get what wow. i'm saying 
So that's why mind, body, spirit progress is important. And this is even teaching you that you can learn specific fire letters and imprint them into yourself. So the adjuster Ooh. can use those to fucking high, high track your ass, you know? Damn. That's when you become like a super saiyan, man. <laughs> oh, straight <laughs> up, dog. Exactly. Ooh. Final form. <laughs> that's hot. Yeah, yep. I'm definitely going to probably enough. print the entire Hebrew alphabet and put it on my wall and start memorizing them. <laughs> I think Hebrew is that that's the language though? Oh, that's what he's referring to when he says the fire letters. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, but he also says it's a 3D light language, but yeah, he does say that Hebrew is like the Hebrew ge- the Hebrew 2D geometries can help you tap into the 3D language of light. What about Sanskrit? Sanskrit probably. Yeah, yeah he so mentions it Sanskrit, can be Sanskrit, Tibetan, Tibetan. Chinese, or Egyptian. Chinese? Yeah. Wow. I wonder if ancient Chinese is different from normal Chinese, but yeah, oh, for I'm sure. not a Chinese guy, so I don't know. <laughs> I would have yeah. thought different. <laughs> Who could tell, right? Dude, that's no. wild. So what, what were the languages again? Egyptian, ancient Chinese, Tibetan, and Sanskrit, Sanskrit and Hebrew? And Hebrew. Yeah, it says mm, Hebrew. Those, yeah, those are like the oldest. It says there's two in your bio lattice matrix in the, mat- in the field that your mind-body-spirit complex emits. There is a, I guess longitudinal lines and latitudinal lines look at them they make a grid you get what i'm saying if you can picture it and that's your screen yeah your screen the longitudinal lines are activated by i'm not getting it right but they're activated by like the egyptian and the chinese and the latitudinal ones are activated by the sanskrit and the tibetan wow. and the what? hebrew ones activate all of them at the same time <laughs> oh wow so the heat they got it figured out yeah so oh geez man that's wild yeah, and he says now, those all, ma- all those sounds are like mantras. They're seed mantras. Those are literally like intonation sounds that you can use to Hebrew? vibrate you down to your atomic level. Yeah, all yeah, of them. You can use Hebrew. all of them. Yeah, but yeah, and we just read that chapter not too long ago. Jeez, that's and, and it makes you so backwards. It's probably not related to that at all. No, we're missing a lot of uh, intonations, like a ha, 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 like that noise. We don't have that noise. We don't have any, like, um noise. We don't have, like, there's a lot of noises that we don't make in our language. We got home. <laughs> <laughs> home. home. Coincidentally. Right, we, we can make all those same noises, but it's not incorporated into our language, so we're not yeah. used to making those noises. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we're learning a lot right now. Oh, and yo, and that's how it's because it comes from sound. So we we influence the light through our sound. So yes. if we're not resonating at the right sound through our language, then we're literally not able to let the light in. Yes, exactly. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So like from birth, when they teach us English, they're literally putting us on the wrong track. Where we oh, God, this is crazy. <laughs> well, English I don't does. Know if have they know to... they're doing that, but <laughs> English no, probably. I don't think so. Aspects that are like nice like you know urantia wasn't translated into hebrew um yeah the, so, the state specifically it was translated english for a specific reason but like when you're talking about data it, because okay a complex language like this hebrew is saying that they have more multi-dimensional data within encoded within their language um you know the question is <laughs> is is all of humanity even ready for that level of of communication you know those who do speak i guess is it aramaic aramaic slash hebrew those who do speak that are they actually utilizing all that data or are they utilizing are they only pulling like the same amount we're pulling from english probably so it's a matter of consciousness and and multi-dimensional ality so it's not just like the language does influence how you think um but it just so happens they make the right set of sounds. I was yeah. going to say, this information is for a planet getting ready to be settled in, like, light and life era. Yeah. So, it's not exactly everyone's going to be on this. No. Not yet. Ooh, well, we could tap in early. Yeah, and yeah. they want to pick up off the 35? Yeah, I'll take over. You said 35? Yeah. Yeah. When the subconscious can, is it sub, subconsciousness? Yep. Yeah, when the subconscious can be unified through a basic alphabet of pictograms, pictograms, life is revealed to proceed according to image programs of these 
fiery scriptures slash slash okay through grams of these fiery scriptures they are seated from one heaven into another allowing the physical intelligence to experience other worlds of reality i think the formatting might be weird on that yeah these ideographs and pictographs of other world geometries fuse color and mathematical indexes which res Respatializes. Respatializes the consciousness of man to participate in the multiple time cells of information. Mm -hmm. Therefore, human thoughts can achieve synchrosimilarity in other time zones of consciousness by stabilized conformations through the language of light. Do yeah, that. That one's thinking. Yeah. That's a trip. Synchro similarity. It's like think about that. Like if yeah, I can. What's a time hold... zone of consciousness? Yeah. Uh, what the? What do you say? A time <laughs> zone. A, oh, okay. What's the time zone of consciousness. Uh, he says the cosmos is uh, divided up into time zones of consciousness, like, like dimensional levels, lines? dimensional levels, like threshold points, like that you literally can't pass through this threshold unless you drop off your physical body. You know. Like okay. A, a geomorancha levels. Like a like a like a border. Like, it's like a, think of the I universe see. as a map, and there's borders, and there's lines that you literally can't pass. It's an energetic threshold. Yeah, like those, layers. Yeah, like consciousness you. time zones. Um, <clears throat> he's saying, like, synchro similarity in other time zones of consciousness. So he's saying, like, I'm thinking he's saying communication be, can be established by holding the same thought form in your mind. Like, say, say in the center yeah. of the universe, they're projecting this thought form of, like, kingdom building, you know? Mm-hmm. And down oh. here, I hold the same thought form in my mind right now. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I'm holding it in my mind now, and it's existing in the center of the universe now. That yeah, will establish a synchro... Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That connection, that circuit, that quantum entanglement. Ooh. Yeah. Damn. Okay. This divine language is also the inductive linkage to the still small voice within the body, which advises you on real day-to-day -day decisions in the world so that your consciousness will not ear in the executing Father's will. Jesus, do you hear this guy talking right yeah, now? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> this yeah. guy talking. He's talking about the adjuster and how it's <laughs> leading you to build the kingdom. <laughs> Literally talking yeah, about Father's will. The truth is the truth, man. It's... You know, you can explain it in one way, in one book or another book, but once you know, you know. Right. You know, you can call it the guru, the guidance of the guru, or the thought adjuster, or what are you, the over self or the higher self. The but guidance the of the guru, the I like that. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. It's, uh, you just got to tap in. you figure it out. Uh, this is the language of light used by all of the hierarchical members. This is their holy word, used to speak in the Father's presence, to speak directly with the Father, no matter what embodiment the soul has put on, to serve even in the distant worlds that are woven out of the letters. Light. Okay. The physical vehicle is necessary to manifest the divine letters on the three-dimensional plane. That makes sense? Whoa. The temple. <laughs> Whoa. That's a trip. Therefore... We must see how the physical universe was shaped out of the divine fire letters. Accordingly, if the letters can still shape the light vibratory structure of your body on a small scale, you can imagine how the divine language can quicken your body of life to an even greater scale of creation where human language will be replaced by the language of light. Okay. I can see that. But first was the word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Human sublanguages are created by grouping visual fields of basic vowels and consonants. Man does not understand that during these early stages of evolution, his vowel patterns are drawn from a trapped consciousness environment. Okay, controlled by the wave ratio of, wave ratios of his biomagnetic and gravitational planetary environment. All right, I think we gotta like go over that one. <laughs> you. John, what does that mean? A trapped consciousness environment. So that means we weren't able to expand. We were controlled by the wave. I don't I'm even know thinking he is saying that we have to revert to speaking. Okay, yeah, like we had to speak. Yes. So that's why we, we speak now. We're trapped in that consciousness environment. So also, gravity, yeah. we, we can associate with uh, like material reality and then we don't have to tap into spiritual reality that's our choice um but if you live as an animal you die as an animal and you don't proceed as a cosmic 
consciousness individual. So, yeah, our language is is actually created mostly for material reasons, you know, because we're in a material world. Um, but, you know, this is saying that in order to raise consciousness, we need to tap into languages that go beyond just, um, you know, necessity by it because gravity has kept us on this planet. Yeah, we yeah. need to transcend the biomagnetic and gravitational planetary environments. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Terrence McKenna says that this reality is made of language. Like, we literally live in a language-based reality. And I think it, he meant more, and this book means more than just our speaking language. Because what is language, really? It's a communication method. So it's there's human sub-languages that are created by a goofy visual field of basic values. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm. Okay. Well... Man will change his language system when he begins to change his wave ratios. This is why the Hebrew letters are eternally written in color geometries expressing multiple language channels so that the entirety of the scripture can eternally participate in other chemical pathways of creation. That's wild. That's really wild. Hmm. Someone had to create Hebrew. Like, think about that. There had to be either a group of people like us or one guy that downloaded or channeled. I think one of the theories is it was taught by one of the celestials. Wow. Yeah. Thus, as the soul evolves from the Earth's evolution through the many spatial dimensions, it changes its language from the vibrations of sound to the language of light, operating at a higher frequency of light. And this key is fulfilled when man is given the language of instruction necessary to take him through Alpha and Omega, from the seventh ray of light creation into the eighth ray, the opening of the gates Damn, of the new says eighth ray, dog. Yeah, that's like the, the Christ chakra. Yeah. yeah. Heavy. <laughs> Damn. The Father's language is a call to the beloved as a spiritual light moving over the waters of creation. In you are that creation. Hey, that's a good quote. <laughs> this is a one nice, tangible. Nice one for Facebook. <laughs> yeah, nice one for Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. <laughs> we are that creation. Wow. That's a trip, man. Yeah, well, that yes. was the end of Key 07. That was pretty dope. Yeah. You've got to tell yourself the right things, man. Talk to yourself in the right way. <laughs> Recognize how you talk to yourself. We all do it, right? Don't be ashamed. We all do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember my first out-of-body experience. I, like, woke up from it and looked at my friends, and I just exclaimed to them, I was like, I don't need to talk to think anymore. And it took me a while to, <laughs> they didn't understand what I was saying at all, but reading this, it kind of becomes clear. It's like, you don't need to use English words in your head to convey messages to yourself. You, know, you can think through pictures, emotions, and feelings. Yeah. Living holograms within your mind. Pretty powerful, man. I'm going to. Very uh, similar Sanskrit. I'm going to wrap this up and press end, and then I'm going to start recording another session. So get your last words in now. <laughs> One love. That's it. All right, you guys are whack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go follow me on Instagram at dbakethewise. I mean, um, this is on my YouTube channel, so if you're listening to this, you're already on my channel. Gary Lee Haskins, my dog, my brother. Yes, you sir. got a channel over there. You got any uh, info you need to drop on them? Oh, you can just search Gary Haskins, Gary Lee Haskins on YouTube. Oh, yeah, that's what you are for I'll all your up. stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, apocryphal text. I think that's what I'm going to call these this session, this series, the apocryphal text series, something like that. But I hope you enjoyed uh, like the prototype, the first one. We're going to refine it. We're going to get a little bit better. I'm going to stop swearing. Sorry. Um, we're doing another one right now, but this is the end of this episode. Key 207 from the Keys of Enoch. Stay tuned. I got an unboxing video of the Keys of Enoch coming soon. And we're just going to do it. We're living it up. Welcome to 606. Welcome to Earth. Welcome to the Legacy FHP YouTube channel. I love y'all. Right. Link to our OnlyFans in the description. <laughs>